So you've got a project, a hobby, a chore, or a repair, and you don't know where to start? Let's figure it out. Hello and welcome back to the Let's Figure This Out channel. I need to winterize some batteries, okay? So let's go figure it out. Okay, well, being on a farm, we've got a lot of equipment. We've got a lot of vehicles, um, and all these vehicles got batteries in them. Now, a lot of these vehicles are not used in the wintertime. So, uh, we have options, and there's basically three options. One, do nothing. The batteries go flat, then they freeze, and then you buy new batteries. I don't like that option. Option two is what I usually do. What I usually do is I park everything right up around the, the shop here and I run extension cords out and I put battery chargers, these trickle chargers that I'm using over here, under the hoods. They're running, they're plugged in all the time and I've never really felt comfortable about that. In the winter time, the wife and I head south. So um, we have people that live in the house but we don't want them to have to deal with this. So, and I'm always concerned that I'm going to get that phone call. Hey, uh, uh, one of your vehicles is on fire and the shop is burning. So what I've done, and I'll have to take you off the stand and move you around to show you all this, um, is I've come up with my third option. My third option is to bring all the batteries in one spot, set up a winter charging station. I'm considering even putting a webcam on it so I could uh, keep an eye on it, but I think that might be a little bit of... Uh, um, anyway, let me peel you off the stand, and I'll show you the uh, uh, the setup. I'll walk you through the setup, and then um, and then uh, I'll go through the process, and I'll put you back in the stand. I'll go through the process of um, actually getting the batteries ready and uh, getting them hooked up and running through an initial cycle. Okay, so hold on just one minute. I got to set my coffee down. Uh. Alrighty, so the heart of the system is this timer up here. And the way it works is it's just a standard Intermatic timer, okay? It'll run for about three to four hours a day. Every day it comes on, it runs, it shuts off. These things, they've been around forever. They're known good quantity. And their failure mode, more often than not, is they just stop working, okay? They, they fail in the off position. It is connected down here to this guy, to this outlet. This is a dedicated outlet for this timer up here, and it feeds into a power strip down here. And this is the charging station. I've got a number of these trickle chargers. These are trickle float chargers. And I've got a number of these. Each battery has its own. And I've got uh, two more. I've got one for the fifth wheel here, uh, and I'm going to be doing a, a quick video on how to winterize it. And its primary function um, uh, is to keep the battery in here charged up because I don't like leaving this guy plugged in. The power management system in an RV, they, they start at $300, okay? Uh, I'd rather have a $49 uh, trickle charger on this thing than run the $300 one all winter. And then I've got my tractor outside. If I need my tractor, I do not want to be loading a battery in it in the dead of winter. So I keep a charger on it out there. Now, a little bit about float chargers. They're trickle float chargers. So trickle, that part means they're less than two amps. You can get them up to three amps, but put a real charger on it then. Uh, these are typically one and a half to two amp uh, chargers, and they have a float mode. What that means is, is they go... They charge, they wait, they check the voltage, and if it doesn't need to be charged, it just floats. Okay, so that's the type I use. Um, very safe, and you combine that with my timer up here, and they're only running three hours a day, okay? It's plenty enough to keep these batteries charged, and uh, as long as I don't have a corrosion problem, and we're going to be going through that here in a minute. I had a corrosion problem with one of them last year. Um, as long as you don't have that corrosion problem, you're in good shape. So let me put you back in the stand, and uh, you get to watch me clean batteries, which, you know, I'll do it in time lapse.
Okay, uh, uh, just made a uh, beginning YouTube video error in which I still had it in time lapse when I went through this whole thing here. But basically, what I've done is uh, I've hooked up all the battery chargers uh, and they're good to go. I went through a little bit more explanation on the process and that I clean the batteries and I just use um, Simple Green. I just like Simple Green. Um, so I used it, I cleaned the terminals off with a battery terminal cleaner and it has acid detector in it. Uh, then I go through and I added uh, water to the batteries. I checked the cells and I used, uh, today I used distilled water. You could use distilled water, deionized water. You can get that stuff at any grocery store. They've got it there. Um, what else, what else? Oh, working with batteries. It's not safe. Um, I use these gloves. Uh, these are nothing special, uh, no sponsorship here. I get them from Sam's Club, Costco. You can get them anywhere. I buy a big bag of them, and I use them for everything. And then I wear these safety glasses. These safety glasses, again, not a sponsor. These are by DeWalt, and what I like about them, one, they're safety glasses, and two, they're bifocals. They got little 2X readers in them, so I can actually see what I'm doing. Anyway, uh, it's going to run for the rest of the day. I turn the timer on. And I'll check it tonight. I'll run voltage tests on them tonight. Uh, I'd appreciate comments, questions, concerns. Um, when it comes to batteries, there's a lot of opinions on it. Okay? So this is the way I do it. If you've got a better way, let's, uh, let's go back and forth in the comments and let's figure out a better way to do it. Thanks again for watching. Well, thanks for joining me today on the Let's Figure It Out channel. And as always, like, comment, and subscribe. Thanks again.